All right, so when we ended our last lecture, we ended with this idea that electrons live in orbitals and these orbitals have different shapes associated with them. Now, now what do we do with that information, right? So what we're gonna do is our goal for this lecture is going to be to build what are called electron configuration or orbital diagrams. And these describe all the different um, orbitals that the electrons within an atom live in. So for example, we could take hydrogen and what we would do for it is write its electron configuration that would look something like this. And that tells us the energy sublevel or the shape, remember, of those orbitals. So it turns out that hydrogen only has, because it's such a simple atom, it only has one um, atomic orbital and that is an S orbital. So remember what shape that would be. That would be those spherical orbitals. And so we would write out its electron configuration looking something like this, where we have the type of orbital, the s orbital. And as a superscript, we have the number of electrons that live in that particular energy sublevel. It's a 1s, we'll see in a second that the 1 corresponds to the size. So this guy is called the principal quantum number and it roughly corresponds to the size of the that in this case s orbital so one s orbital is smaller than a two s orbital smaller than a three s orbital all of which are still spherical though okay but so this is very goal for every atom we're going to be able to write an electron configuration that's going to look something like this okay um, the other thing that we can do that's, oh, and, and just to point out, why is there a one? Well, remember, because hydrogen, if we look on our periodic table, is the first element on our periodic table. It has atomic number of one, meaning it has one proton. So a neutral hydrogen atom has one electron as well. Okay, the other thing that we can do, so this would be called the electron configuration, all right, the 1s1. The other thing that we can do is what's called an orbital diagram. It conveys the exact same information, but in something that looks a little bit more like a graph. Okay, so here, um, hydrogen is quite simple. So you could see, uh, you know, there's not much to this particular thing, but again, you have the same information there. You have the um, orbital that the electron lives in, in this case, the S orbital. Again, you have that principal quantum number and then you see that this orbital is kind of represented by a box. And what you fill it with is a different arrow that represents the electron that lives in there. So since hydrogen has one electron living in there, it's one S with that one electron it living in that box. So again, this is the orbital diagram. If what we saw before was one S one, and this was called the electron configuration. And they give you the exact same information. They're just different ways of representing that same information. And again, what is that information? It's the type of orbitals that make up a hydrogen atom, right? So if you were able to hop into your magic school bus and zoom on down into a hydrogen atom, what you would see is it's one electron is trapped in a spherical cage. As we get bigger, bigger and bigger with our elements, those cages are gonna look way more complicated, okay? All right, so um, this is another example of an uh, orbital diagram that hasn't been filled in yet, okay? And notice that now it has multiple different types of orbitals. You have your 1s, right? So that's your small sphere. But then you, the next level up is a 2s. So that means that there's one small sphere and then a larger sphere trapped on top. And these are in order of increasing energy. And then on top of that, you have those peanut shaped orbitals. And remember we had those three different orientations, those three different sub levels. That's why for the p orbital, we have three different boxes, okay? 
Um, we how did, how did I know to draw this one S, two S, two P? We'll get to that in a second, but for now, just trust me on this, okay? So let's say you're given an empty electron, uh, I'm sorry, an, uh, an empty orbital diagram like this, okay? There are some rules to how you got to go about filling it up. Um, the first rule is you have to go from, high, uh, from lowest energy to highest energy. So we'll always start filling with our lowest energy 1s orbital, then we would fill our 2s, then we would fill our 2p. Next rule, an orbital can ac accommodate a maximum of two electrons. So that means in each one of these boxes here, I can have a maximum of two arrows. Remember the arrow represented an electron, okay? Um, these electrons, these two electrons must have opposite spin. We'll talk about what that is in a second, but for right now, just bear with me. What that's going to look like in terms of what we draw is one arrow is gonna be pointed up, one arrow is gonna be pointed down, okay? Don't worry too much about spin at this point. Um, we'll get to that actually the next lecture when we talk about quantum numbers. It's basically just this property that electrons have. Some of them spin up, some of them spin down. If they're gonna live in the same orbital, they have to be spinning in opposite directions, okay? And then the last rule, and this is kind of the trickiest, is for energies, uh, rather for sublevels that are at the same energy. So I'm looking over here at this 2p. You have to fill each one, one uh, give each one one electron before you start to double up. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, so let's say, oh, um, I was going to start filling in this diagram and here, let me erase these. And let's say I had eight electrons to fill in my orbital or to fill in my diagram. I'm gonna start at the lowest energy level first, right? One, and then each box needs two. So two, I'm gonna make sure that there's spot, uh, one spin up, one spin down. So that's two, I got six more. Three, four, and then here's the tricky part. This part's Hun's rule. When I get to my two P, I have to go five, six, seven, half fill everything first before going back and doubling up. Okay, so that's how we go about filling in our atomic orbital, uh, yeah, our orbital diagrams, all right? Um, again, following these rules, the, the weirdest one, I'll again just show when you get to this, right? So we're filling kind of normally, one spin up, one spin down, move up to the next energy level, one spin up, one spin down. When we get up to the next energy level, those three sublevels are at the same energy. So we have to half, 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 half before we can double up. Cool. All right. So helium, if we looked on our periodic table, helium's the next smallest atom. So that has two electrons. So that's what's represented here, both of them are in that lowest 1s energy level. So now let's worry about how we convert from this sort of orbital diagram into our electron configuration. Again, we have our 1s. We have our 1s, but now, we have a two as our superscript because that two again corresponds to the number of le uh, electrons that live with live within that uh, orbital, that sublevel, and then the one s that is the actual sublevel. So that's that small spherical shape. So when we get to lithium, we got to now fill in more, right? So now how we would do this is we're going to find lithium on the periodic table. A ground state lithium atom will have three, or rather a neutral lithium atom will have three electrons. So I go back to my diagram here and I start filling in one spin up, one spin down. 
But remember, I can only have two per box. That means I need to go to the next box, which would be the 2S. So I have now one spin up. So how do we write our, so again, this is the orbital diagram. How do we write the electron uh, figuration? I'm again gonna start with my 1S. Again, going to start with my 1s. That's what you list first. You always go from lowest energy to highest. And again, there are two electrons in that 1s, so it's 1s2. But I also have some occupying the 2s orbital, so that I also write 2s1. Okay, so that would be the electron configuration for lithium. Notice as we get larger and larger, you just start tacking more stuff on to these electron configurations. All right, let's go for carbon now. So first we're gonna go uh, build our electron, uh, our orbital diagram rather, and then we'll work on our electron configuration. So for carbon, how many electrons do we need to put in? How do we figure that out? We again go to our periodic table. Carbon has six protons, which means that a carbon atom will have six electrons. So now we're gonna start one, two, three, four. And remember Hun's rule, five, six. So I have to half fill those P orbitals. I don't double up on one sub level. I go through and half fill. So this would correspond to an electron configuration of one S two, right? This corresponds to this box here. 2, oh, that's pretty far away, 2s2. This now corresponds to this box here. And then 2p2. And this corresponds to this box here. Okay, and again, what does this like electron configuration or orbital diagram mean? This is really a picture of what a carbon atom looks like. Two electrons are trapped in a small spherically shaped orbital. Two more are trapped in a slightly larger spherically shaped orbital, right? That's because again, the one and the two, those numbers out front correspond to size. And then two electrons are trapped in a peanut shaped orbital, right? So this is essentially building um, what is the model of an atom, this very complicated quantum mechanical model of an atom. Okay, um, we can actually sort of, you could start either way. So again, they give you the same pieces of information. Now let's work on going from a electron configuration, right? So that's what these are over here. To an orbital diagram. Okay, so this is now for oxygen. We're given that the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. How would we go about drawing the orbital diagram? Well, we have to make a 1s orbital. I'm not gonna do the whole box. I'm just gonna do a line underneath. It's, it's the same, same idea. A 2s orbital. And then I'm gonna draw the 2P, but remember I'm gonna need three boxes because of those three different orientations of the 2P sublevel. And as indicated here, so let's see if I can get my coloring consistent. Here's my 1S, so I should have two electrons in the 1S, right? That's what that superscript means. I should have two electrons in the 2S. That's all that can fit in there anyway. And then I have four electrons in the 2P. So remember how we fill this. One, two, three, four electrons in that 2P. Okay, so you can see it's not too bad to convert between the two. If you have the orbital diagram, it's really easy to get the electron configuration. 
If you have the electron configuration, it's really easy to get the orbital diagram. But how do we get them um, um, starting from scratch is what we're gonna work on now. One other thing I wanted to point out that we've sort of touched on, but it's important to know, the S orbitals on your orbital diagram, they will have one box. So an S orbital, which means that they can fit two electrons. A P orbital, as we've seen, has three boxes. That means that it can fit a maximum of six electrons. We haven't seen an example of this yet, but we did note when it comes to Ds that they have five boxes associated with them. Remember that when we're looking at the shape of D orbitals, there were these one, two, three, four, five sublevels. So just like with the P orbital, we had one, two, three that corresponded to those different orientations. It's the same thing with the D orbitals. We have five different sublevels of our D orbital, so we need to draw five boxes if we're doing an electron diagram or an orbital diagram. Okay, so when we get to it, we'll know that D orbitals should have five boxes, meaning that they can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. Okay, so now again, we're gonna work on, so we've sort of gotten hopefully uh, an understanding of what exactly information is in these electron configurations same information that's in these orbital diagrams, how do we go about drawing on from scratch, okay? For that, we would use sort of this little cheat sheet here, okay? Notice that this is just a periodic table, but now it's got these different boxes that are labeled with our orbital labels. So what does that mean? Well, remember hydrogen, that would be the position of a hydrogen atom, and it only had that one s orbital. Likewise, Lithium is right under hydrogen here, okay? Um, if you remember, we saw that lithium had, lithium's electron configuration was 1s2, 2s1. We saw that a few slides earlier. And so this is lithium here. And so you could see that it's on that, in that sort of like 2s block. Okay, so wherever you are on the periodic table, um, we're gonna do an example with fluorine here in a second, you contain not only the 2p orbital, but everything in front of it as well. Okay, so uh, let's just say that we were, we'll do an even more complicated one. An element that lives here. That means that it would have a 3p, but also a 3s, and then we're going to go back up, also a 2p, also a 2s, and then finally a 1s. Okay, so that's sort of how you can tell what orbitals build up your, to your elements. So let's do an example now. Okay, I'm going to need this graph, so I'm going to erase this. All right, so we're going to do an example with fluorine. Okay, so first what we would do is we would need to find fluorine on our periodic table. Fluorine lives right here. It's the first of the halogens. Okay, so then we need to find that same box in this table here, that would be this one. Okay, and that means that our electron configuration will have a 2p orbital, right? Because it's in this 2p block, but also a 2s and a 1s. All right, so those are what we're gonna to need to draw. We could, you could start with either the electron configuration or the um, orbital diagram. I'm gonna start with the orbital diagram first. Again, we said it was 1s, 2s, 2p, and we're gonna go through and fill in these subscripts here in a second. If I was being really good, I would make sure to draw my axes, label them, so this would be energy. Um, if I'm gonna draw these, 
uh, orbitals, remember that the one S would correspond, you know, the S orbitals have one box associated with them. And I need to go up in energy. And then I get to the 2P and that should have one, two, three associated with them. Okay, so now we already learned how to fill in this diagram. We have to go see how many electrons fluorine would have. In this case, that atomic number is nine. So now we're gonna go into our diagram here and fill it in with nine electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So finally, we can now put in our superscripts here. That's 1s2, 2s2, and 2p5. Okay. Another way that you could sort of check that by looking just on the periodic table here is first of all, it's only your last orbital that's going to be potentially like partially filled. So if I'm already at a 2p, I know I'm at my, my lower orbitals, my 1s and my 2s are already filled. So how many electrons do I put in the p orbital? One, two, three, four, five. You can sort of count how far in to that p block here you are, okay? Um, so we'll, do, we'll start off and do that with our next example here which is cobalt. So now we'll do a transition metal. Again, first thing we gotta do is find cobalt on the periodic table. It'll be here. I'm very good at finding stuff on the periodic table because I've been looking at them for 20 years. You guys might have to hunt around a little bit, that's okay. Uh, the more you practice, the better you'll get it. Like I know kind of where I should be looking. Um, and just let's make a note here. It's like one, two, three, it's four in from the end of the transition metal, just so we make sure to get the right box. When we look at this chart here, again, let me get rid of all these markings. All right, so this was cobalt. Right, and let's, we'll first do the electron configuration. That's kind of all, that's the easy, I mean, it's definitely the quickest to write, but it's also the easiest once we get good at it. Because again, what I'm gonna do is just sort of note all the different orbitals that make up cobalt based on where it is on the periodic table. So that would be 3D would be the last one. Okay. So we got our 3D and then we hit 4S. Okay, then we're 3P. Then we get to 3S. Then 2P. Two 2S. And finally, we're back at our 1S, the lowest level. Okay, um, and notice how it went 3s, 3p, 4s, and then we're back to 3d. That's just, just kind of one of these weird things about how this works. That's perfectly normal. All right, um, and again, the easy way to do this is to say, all right, my 3d, I, I, we, we'll have to figure out how full that is, but I can assume that everything else is completely full meaning that all my S orbitals have two electrons in them and my P orbitals can fit, oh, missed this one. And my P orbital can fit how many electrons? Six. So right off the bat, I can get sort of pretty close to done. And then how many electrons do I have to put in this 3D orbital? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 3D7. Okay, so it's actually not too bad to get your electron configuration. Let's go ahead and build our orbital diagram just to make sure that we know what we're doing here. So 
it's a good idea to pause and see if you can't figure it out yourself based on what we've learned and then play it back to make sure. Um, but just in case, I'll go through it, of course, one S. I have to write a little bit smaller because I'm anticipating trying to fit a lot more in here. Three lines for the 2P. Three lines for the 3P. And then we have, remember how many lines should we have for the 3D? Remember D would correspond to five boxes. One, two, three, four, five. This would be 3D. And I could do it the long way where I said, okay, cobalt should have 27 electrons. Let me count 27. But I can also take a hint from my electron configuration now that we've drawn that. Everything except for the 3D, everything here is all completely full. I'll still be good about the way I fill these to follow Hun's rule, but of course it doesn't really matter. Good habit to get in though. And then when you get to the 3D, this is the tricky part that you need to make sure you fill correctly, especially that you are bang Hun's rule by going one, two, three, four, five, half filling everything first before completing it with six, seven electrons. Okay, so from scratch, we can just look at the periodic table, um, you know, sort of figure out where our element is on the periodic table. We can look at this little cheat sheet here and figure it out. By the end of it, you won't even need this little hint, right? Because I mean, you can sort of see how it goes. 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s. So let me get rid of all these markings here. Three S, four S, five S, six S, seven S. Same thing on the other side starts with two P, three P, four P, five P, six P, seven P. And then with our transition metals, they start with three D, four D, five D, six D. Okay, so based on where it is, you can figure that out. And again, what's the difference between a two P and a three P? Both of those are peanut shaped. The difference is the 3P is just gonna be a little larger. A 4P is a little bit larger than that. 5P, a little bit larger than that, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so now there's like a shorthand that we can do to condense our electron configurations. Um, and that's what's called the uh, sort of noble gas abbreviation, where basically this is if we took uh, what would this be, 3s1, so this would be sodium. This would be the electron configuration for sodium right here. Well, we can abbreviate these with the Nobel gas configuration by noting that neon, the closest Nobel gas, its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, okay? Let's just point this out real quick. Here's neon. It's at the end of that 2P block, right? So a full 2P block. Sodium would be the next element down here. So again, we can abbreviate this by saying, um, instead of saying 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S1, we instead insert in brackets NE, meaning put whatever the electron configuration for neon is here. And then on top of that, it has the 3S1, okay? Um, so again, that's just sort of how we can simplify shorthand, save us some writing, um, is instead of writing, both of these would be acceptable, right? So you, if I asked for the full electron configuration, you would give me this, but this is equivalent to this condensed or abbreviated condensed, where you just write neon, 3s1. Uh, the only thing I want to point out is that if you see these problems on Canvas, Canvas won't let me use square brackets. It means something special for Canvas, so they're curly brackets. Uh, traditionally, they you do use square brackets, but again, Canvas just won't let me. 
Um, you can use it in your answers. I just can't use it when I'm building the quiz. So you'll see that there are squiggly brackets. It means the same thing. All right, so let's just do one more of these here from scratch. We want the uh, electron configuration and orbital diagram for another element. We'll just, let's just do one of these here, which one's the biggest one. Let's do sulfur. Uh, actually, let's, I think the next page has another set that are even larger. So yeah, let's do a really big one. Let's do bromine. Okay. Um, same sort of idea. We're going to get our Nobel gas config, our, our uh, electron configuration, and our orbital diagram. I'll actually put in a blank piece here. So we're going to do so. Step one. What do we do? We got to find it on the periodic table. Okay. Bromine on the periodic table. Does this guy here again, it's a transition metal. So if I then go to my little cheat sheet periodic table, that would correspond to this location right here. So what are you going to do? We're going to start from the back where bromine is. That's that 4P. And we're going to fill in everything that lies before it. So we got the 4P. Now we need a 3D. Then we hit a 4S. A little crazy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Then we hit a 3P. Then we hit a 3S, then we hit a 2P, then we hit a 2S, and finally the 1S. So 2S, 1S. Okay. Um, and again, since Bromine lives in this 4P block. That's going to be the only one of those orbitals that can be partially filled. So I can automatically assume everything else is completely filled. So 1S2, 2S2, 2P6. Remember, P orbitals can hold six when they're full. 3S2, 3P6, 4S2. And then if that D orbital is full, how many electrons total can it hold? 10, remember five boxes, two electrons per box, that would give us to 10. And then I gotta figure out how many are in that P orbital. So I just count in to the P block here. One, two, three, four, five. So that would give me my electron configuration for bromine. Notice that the further down you get on that periodic table, the longer your electron configuration is gonna be. All right, let's just move this over here. Now, what if I wanted to do the Nobel gas abbreviation? Um, so the way that we would do that, I wanna point out something real quick. So bromine is right next to krypton. It is one electron away. However, when you're doing your Nobel gas uh, abbreviations, it's always the Nobel gas that came before that particular element. So in the case of bromine, I would be talking about going all the way back and using argon, whoops, in my Nobel gas abbreviation, okay? And so you can convince yourself that this, so here's argon here, that would be the full 3P block. So this electron configuration here is the electron configuration for argon. 
So if I wanted to do bromine using that argon abbreviation, I would just add on whatever's left over after putting that nail bell gas in there. So in this case, 4S2, 3D10, 4P5. So this would be the electron configuration for bromine. Same thing as I had above, but I'm just using that Nobel gas abbreviation. Okay, and then lastly, we can draw a big, ugly, well, it won't be ugly, but it will be large, orbital diagram for bromine by making sure we have all the energy levels that are represented in my electron configuration here. So that would be 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, and then 4p. Right, and then I just have to fill them in in accordance to what my electron configuration says. Again, I could just look at the periodic table and say, oh, I need 35 of them and then obey those filling rules. Um, you know, double check it against your configuration, make sure everything checks, but yes. This is again, Hun's rule. We're gonna go through and half fill everything first. And then finally, we should end up with a P orbital that has five electrons in it. So that's one, two, three, four, five. This would be the full electron configuration, the abbreviated electron configuration and the orbital diagram all from scratch for bromine.